Well, thank you for a very informative conference. We will all very moved by the testimonies of those persecuted in China. And they do not get political uh, refugee status in Korea, but they have similar problems in European countries, including my own country, Italy, and Germany. So summing up this conference, I want to ask why, confronted with such obvious and blatant case of religious persecution and even torture, refugee status is not recognized by civilized countries such as Germany or Italy or South Korea. Unlike uh, Rosita Shorite, I'm not a diplomat or expert in international organization. I'm a sociologist. And uh, as a social scientist, I believe there are three reasons for this. None of these three reasons alone is enough, but combined, they create the problem. The first one, as Ms. Shorita explained, is that in the world, there are too many people claiming to be refugees. And the public opinion is scared. We cannot welcome millions of refugees. That's surely the case in Europe and in Italy. And governments are scared. What will be the social consequences of allowing millions of refugees, and some of them are false refugees. They escape from poverty, that's a different problem, but they do not correspond to the definition of a refugee in the international convention. So the first reason is refugees in general are not necessarily popular. The second reason is China. Uh, China is a very powerful country. It's the first or the second uh, most powerful economy in the world. All countries, including Italy, have very important economic ties with China. We need to sell our products in uh, China. China is the owner of part of our national debts, much more in the United States, but they have this position in Italy too. And so uh, it's very clear that many governments and private organizations do not want to come into a conflict with China. And the third reason is specific to the Church of Almighty God. I'm very upset when I see that certain organizations will not deal with the refugee crisis of the Church of Almighty God. I believe it's very much wrong. But then I try to understand the reason and they go to Wikipedia or other sources, including BBC or CNN, and they will read that Church of Almighty God uh, kills young ladies in McDonald's or kidnaps pastors or take the eyes out of the sockets uh, or uh, stabbed uh, uh, old ladies with knives and 
every week there is something new. So uh, it is clear that uh, CCP was very successful in uh, working uh, with uh, uh, international encyclopedia, international media, and even to some extent academics, uh, uh, certainly journalists, to convey a very negative image of the Church of uh, Almighty God. So, somebody in these countries, Italy, Germany, Korea, say, yeah, perhaps they are persecuted, but they are also bad people. We don't want to, to deal with them. So if there are these three problems, uh, what can we do? Because I always believe uh, uh, conferences should be constructive. Otherwise, we say a lot of nice words, but uh, we waste our time, which is often the case in academic conferences. So what can be done? I believe it's very useful to multiply these international conferences all over the world in other countries, and also to include in academic uh, conferences uh, this kind of distinction who is the real refugee? Because even academics, they don't know. There is a lot of confusion. I don't read Korean. I don't know about Korean media. But if I read Italian media, there is a lot of confusion. Immigrant, uh, refugee, asylum seeker, and the public opinion makes uh, no clear distinction about the guy who comes from Central Africa because he is very poor. So we can have sympathy for him. He has no work in Central Africa, but we cannot welcome all of Africa into Europe, of course. Uh, so this person, if he returns to Central Africa, he has no work. That's bad. But your case is different. If you retire to China, you will be imprisoned or tortured or killed. That's different. Now, uh, believe me, this difference is not clear. It's not clear to public opinion, journalists, sometimes <laughs> even academics. So this kind of speech, who is the refugee, is very important to, to disseminate in all possible venues. China, I uh, know China is very powerful, but uh, I went to China twice this year. And my question is, why exactly did they invite me? And other people who are very well known for being defenders of religious liberty, even of groups labeled as cults, we don't believe in cults or discrimination against cults. So why did CCP invite me? And the only uh, serious answer is because China, to some extent, uh, cares about their international image. So they want to show that they have a dialogue with international scholars, they take it's probably not true, but they want to show that they take into account the opinions of international scholars. So China does have a concern for international public opinion. And third, there is a huge problem in this world of fake news. You saw fake news may have determined the results of the elections in very big countries. And uh, we know there are governments employing hundreds of people in disseminating fake news. So fighting fake news is very important. It's perhaps not so much important that people 
clearly understand your theology. Your theology may be very complicated, but uh, it's very important that you convey the message. We have a different theology from, say, Catholics. Not very much clear. But we don't kill people in the McDonald's. We don't... Uh, uh, take the eyes uh, out of the the, 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 the the eyeballs. We don't cut the ear of people. These are fake news or news which cannot be proved. This is very important. So I believe uh, you have a good point in your church. But unlike other organizations, you are very open to scholars. We as scholars have visited your churches, not in China, they are uh, secret, of course, but we have visited your churches in different countries, uh, Italy, South Korea, United States, and you are very open. You answer the questions of the scholars, but also to fight the fake news, because fake news are a huge problem. I will say today, if you look at the media, it's one of the main problems, and you are the typical victim of black propaganda and fake news. So fighting the fake news one by one is very important. So I would not tell you the truth if I would say that your situation is easy. It's not easy because uh, there is a w global uneasiness about refugees, because too many people apply for refugee status in the world. Some of them are false, not your case, but some of them are false refugees. And because China is a very powerful organization. Even scholars, you know, sometimes some groups are criticizing us cults with fake news, but these fake news are fabricated by, say, other Christian churches. They are more easy to, to fight, but in this case, fake news are fabricated by a huge system. So they may be much more difficult to fight. So your situation is not easy, but uh, you have rights, as Ms. Sharita said, uh, your rights should be protected. And so I would urge uh, all uh, bona fide human rights uh, defenders, all responsible media, and all new religious movements and uh, humanitarian law uh, experts and scholars to work to tell the truth. Uh, your story is one of the most moving story today in the world. It's one of the, uh, in a way, it's one of the big scandals. People who clearly deserve the status of refugees are not acknowledged as real refugees. It's a big scandal, which involves uh, democratic, highly respected countries, such as my country, your country, Korea. And so truth should be told. It will not be easy, but I believe uh, that if we all work together, we may come from different backgrounds, we may believe in different uh, religions, uh, we may have different political ideas, but here, it's not about politics. It's not about religion. It's about torture and blood and human beings. And so we should all work together. Thank you.